by Illustrado. You and... don't have to read it, you just have to buy it. Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast that's also a video. I am Red and I am joined today by Miguel Sihuko, a professor at NYU uh, Abu Dhabi. He is also a writer everywhere. <laughs> so he's written nonfiction for the New York Times, contributed to many other like prominent publications. He's even written fiction. Like if you don't know, like this is one of the more popular books internationally. Illustrado, check it out. It's in all of the bookstores. He signed our copy. I don't know if you'll be as lucky, but anyway, without further ado, hi. Hi. Thank yeah. you for having me. This and is yeah. really great. I'm a big fan of the Filipino free thinkers. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you have written everything, but your nemesis, your arch nemesis seems to be social media. Only because I love it so much, you know? You know how it is. Yeah. You love it so much, you hate it. The more you hate, the more you love, you know? So you are notorious. You are a Facebook not. criminal. I'm on board. You've okay. been thrown in jail so many times now. Like, how, like by your account, how many times have you been? <laughs> this is the fourth time. I'm currently suspended again. Again? Uh, for a post that I, I strung together all of the quotes from Duterte and um, Facebook flagged it, ironically. Okay. Um, I guess somebody flagged it and they... Or, or rather, 15 million people flagged it. Who knows? Okay, right? yeah. We'll never really know. Um, depends on the polls. But then, uh, yeah, and then th th a couple of days ago, they, I got these weird emails saying that somebody has been reporting my, my, my uh, profile as fake. I, I got something like a, at least 20 of these different messages on my email um, over two hours. So I just went and I deactivated my account. Okay. So I'm feeling I'm, I'm, I can't I can't go and change it because I'm suspended. Yeah. I can't I, I can't post anything about it, and then I'm being attacked. Okay. So you know I said forget it. I'm going to change gears. So everything has probably been thrown at you already on you know every bad thing you can you've probably experienced. Well, they've made memes about me. Okay. They've they've, they've made up lies about me. They've attacked me. They've death threats, mobs, death threats, threats, of, threats, threats of violence. Of violence. I was told not to go to Davao, so I went to Davao. Yeah. You know, I mean, they... And also, maybe no rape threats? or maybe No, actually, yeah. Even rape threats? Yeah, there's this okay. one guy I thought who, you had at least that. who wanted to rape me up the bum. Okay. And uh, he, he posted it. He sent me an, uh, a message. And the thing is, his, his uh, newlywed photo with his, his, his beautiful wife, um, and with him in his, in his nice suit and yeah. her in her white dress, was his profile picture. So he's there saying, you know, he's going to fuck me up the wet. What? Okay. But then, you know, he's got this really, I mean, go figure. Yeah. So I want to go back to something you said. People told you not to go to Davao because something violent and uh, bad will happen to you if you go, went there. Mm -hmm. But you went there. And that's something I really admire about you. Like, unlike a lot of people who have thrown their opinions on this issue of the death squads and all that, you actually went to the scenes. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? So how did that go? Well, because I write opinion for you know, the New York Times, I've contributed to The Guardian, the, the Globe and Mail, the Boston Review, all of these different newspapers, I want my opinion to be an informed opinion. And I wanted to see, you know, you're hearing all sorts of disinformation. And I thought, well, you know, why don't I just go? It's, it's super simple. All you have to do is just go to the rallies, go, go into the streets, go into the barangays, Go to the, you know, the funerarias, go to the wakes, go to the drug rehab, community-based drug rehab initiatives, talk to people and figure things out. Because how else are you going to counter disinformation if not with actual real, real world on the street information? And so, I mean, I did that for several reasons. I wanted to make sure that my opinion was informed. I wanted to um, also show people that if, I mean, I... I I'm an Atenista, I grew up in Forbes Park, I'm, I'm the quintessential elitista conio that people like to disparage. If I can do it, shouldn't everybody else, shouldn't all these bloggers, uh, you know, who live abroad? Minor or major blogger, exactly. e everyone. Shouldn't they all actually be, instead of saying, oh, people are emailing me, people are telling me, shouldn't they actually be going where, where the most vulnerable Filipinos are being victimized or have something to say, rather than just supporting the powers that be, propping up some another trapo, another yeah. dynasty. Why don't you go actually 
get out of your privileged life as, as I've tried to yeah. and actually go and see and talk to people and, yeah. and what I found when I went to the barangays especially the ones that that you know were victims of the sauna for example when they would round up dozens and dozens of men and just then to hide just them, take them in and, yeah. and all of that everybody wanted to come talk to me you know I, I it would start out with one and then they'd be like wait again must see and then everybody else would come and next thing I know there would be like 15 20 people telling their stories talking about how their husband was killed how their son was arrested how they were bribed how they had to sell their houses because they had to make make bail you know even though they were model citizens and all of that sort of stuff they had just passed the police clearance all sorts of obvious instances of police abuse they just wanted to be heard because they can't go anywhere they can go to the police and they're threatened too of course they're threatened right yeah. like they get the threats like if this member of your family does not reform they will be killed mm -hmm. and the you know implicit threat there as well is if you if you make any trouble for us we have the power to kill you as well right Right, so they they often do not have the courage, and when someone like you comes there, you know they're just all too ready to tell their stories, and you've heard yeah, them. I have, I have, and you know the, I'm sure if anybody went and asked them sincerely, they would probably tell them the same things. You know, tell their stories as well. You know, not all the cops are bad, obviously, right? Of course, yeah. But it's 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 ridiculous for us to gloss over the fact that there are police abuses, that there are you know deaths under investigation, that or the, where there are no uh, appropriate or, or really sincere efforts to, to get to the bottom of them. And I think those are the people that we should, or those are the instances, those are the issues that we should really be focusing on rather than just trying to make excuses for yeah. another set of trappos, for yeah. another set of traditional politicians um, who may or may not have great intentions, but who really need all of us to be more engaged, more involved, and more informed. And information. You have a lot of this. Of course, you've researched whatever you could find online, in print. You've talked to the actual people involved, the, the police, the, the victims, the families' victims, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Yeah. And then you're online and you are harassed by these people who have literally no idea other than what's shared by pages like Thinking Pinoy, mm -hmm. like Mocha Uson, yeah. like whatever the next uh, fake news site says, that's what they gobble up. Yeah. And there's an imbalance, but they attack you in the hundreds, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. and you have, like, despite all that, you know, like, you'd, you'd think that with all of the information that you know, you'd be angry, like, and you have a right to be angry, but you're not, you do not express it that way. You do not, for instance, do what other people who are angry online are, like, for example, you do not call people Duterte-tards. I've never ever... Or any name word. whatsoever. No. no. You know, the, the worst you probably have done is post some critical stuff about the administration, mm -hmm. some sarcasm maybe, some satirical posts, but... Yeah. And I've bitten back against some of the yeah. Duterte propagandists, the Marco pro propagand Marcos pro propagandists, yeah. who really went personal and with me, you know, yeah. ad hominem attacks. Um, and I actually almost regret fighting back but I had to stand my ground, Imano. Of course, of course. Yeah. But the the point is, you advocate this keeping the moral high ground, mm -hmm. you know, not stooping to any level and you know fighting like that, that just to maintain that civility. I wouldn't even say it's it's, it's moral high ground because that's sort of like this this yeah. sense of superiority where I'm trying to be better than them. I just know that look, we're all Filipinos. We all want the same good things for the country. We just disagree on which route to take to get okay. there, diba? Right? Um, and I've been burnt also before. I've, you know, I've, I'm 41 years old. I've, I've lived through many administrations. I, I hated the, the, the Estrada administration. That was where I, I got very political. In, before, I, I was super apathetic. This is my political uh, evolution. You know, I grew up. I grew up in, around politics. My dad was a politician. You know, my mom was, entered politics for a while uh, for, for, to, 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 to work with him. Um, I've... As a child, I went on the campaign trails. Um, I've seen the backroom deals. I've heard all the strategizing. I, I, I have a good sense enough of politics to know that I hate it. And so I, I went against the Arab because it was really bastos talaga, yeah. you know. And I thought Gloria was our answer. She didn't have to, 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 to cheat. She didn't have to steal. You know, she was you know, wealthy enough and, and established enough. And then look at the man, what, what happened over nine years, right? Yeah. I mean, with, with, with her dealings with China, 
you know, allowing them to survey um, the, the, the the West Philippine Sea, yeah. right, which kind of opened things up. Um, the, the the ZTE broadband, yeah. um, the, the 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 North Rail project, and you know the, all the of these cheating pro- allegations, as the well. cheating yeah. allegations, but all of these things that you know, like China coming in saying, "I'm going to give you some money," yeah. and and she and her administration and and her cohorts using it as an opportunity to steal, cheating, all of that. She was in power for nine years, so I loved her. I I was I almost I made excuses for her, even when I knew she cheated against. Uh, in the Hello Garci thing, yeah. even when I knew that um, I thought, okay, the ends justify the means, which is something we hear a lot nowadays. Familiar. Yeah. Um, she cheated against uh, Poe, yeah. right? And I thought, okay, that's fine because if Poe gets him back into power, he's going to let Arab off. All of the the, the corrupt politicians are going to come back in, and then look them on what Gloria did, right? Pardoned Arab, allowed them all to come back in. Yeah. And so by the time uh, Aquino came around, you know. I honestly didn't care so much. You'd already been, been disillusioned at I the time. I was so yeah. disillusioned, so disillusioned. And, you know, I thought, okay, Aquino's fine in the beginning, but then he did all these things that I, I completely disagreed with. He had a tin ear. He was distant from 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 people. He, he made he excuses. He made excuses. Yeah. He fought against the, the media. You know, and I protested against those things also, socially on, on, online, but I didn't, um, on social media. And... But I didn't write about it because I didn't give a shit about Philippine politics at that point. I thought, okay, yeah. well, you know, I'm living there's abroad. There's no hope. And, there's no know. hope. Maybe this trickle-down effect will work, okay. you know. Um, and then I came back at the end of uh, 2015. I moved back to the Philippines. And um, after living abroad for a while, working, you know, studying, I got my PhD. I had a scholarship. Um, establishing my career, writing fiction. Um, and then I came back because I wanted to to really get involved um, and, and give back. You know, you hear about the brain drain, I wanted to come yeah. back. And then, um, my, I guess my re-entry into politics was uh, the last campaign in 2016. And, and one of the things I did was I went to all of the meeting de avance of all of the, the, the politicians. Um, I didn't want to hear what the politicians had to say because they all kind of say the same thing, versions yeah. of the same thing. Yeah. Um, I wanted to interview all the the, the the voters to find out what makes them tick, and I saw, you know, the I knew Duterte would win. It was obvious, and even I was like filled with with uh, uh, inspiration being there at this meeting de avance in in Luneta, and um, I thought, okay, if anyone can can move the Filipino people like this to to, to create change from them from the people. Um, I had my doubts about him on yeah. China, on the Marcoses, on, on, on his... Uh, on the DDS, the maybe? On the DDS, yeah. on the killings, all of that. But, you know, seeing that he could move people, I was kind of believe, you know? Oh, I, I never thought this. I, I never knew that, that you were once upon a time more hopeful about Duterte being the, the president. Was, because okay. I went and I talked to, not, I didn't hear the politicians. I talked to what everybody, all the different voters were thinking. I went yeah. to Post Rally, I went to uh, Mars, I went to all of them. All in one day. It was, it was a great day. Um, and I just realized that it, it is about the people. And one, one um, Duterte supporter, you know, I was interviewing him. He was saying, you know, I, I'm from, the, I'm from uh, Jensan. Um, I was anti-Marcos. But I really believe Duterte means well. Um, um, you know, he, I disagreed with him on some things. He was saying, well, you know, these people were being killed in, in Davao. I, I, I know all about that, yeah. and they deserved it, Naman. But, um, and I said, well, what about checks and balances? What about his threats to close down the legislature, to, to impose democracy, uh, to impose dictatorship, uh, dictatorship yeah. and suspend democracy? He said, you know, if that happens, it's up to us to reverse it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, you know, that, that, that stayed with me. This, this idea that, yeah, it is up to us. And, you know, honestly, I support Duterte on many, many issues. Um, I'm not sure about federalism, but a lot of the reforms that he's doing, just like, you know, there are good reforms under Aquino, there are good reforms under Arroyo. The truth of the matter is, is the Philippines is far more advanced than it was when I was growing up. Yeah. Right? Uh, it, it, it's advanced a lot in the 20 years. Not enough, of course. There's inequality, things need to be fixed, the dynasties rule, you know, 80% of the legislature, that's unacceptable. Yeah. But um, the issues with Duterte for me is that, and, and in fact, I was teaching uh, earlier this week and one student asked me, you know, do you think um, we Filipinos made a mistake in voting for Duterte? 
And I said, honestly, no. I think the mistake is that we were not able or we were not prepared enough to be able to allow him or anyone to come into power, but within the limitations of the presidency, of the executive, with the checks and balances, with the co-equal branches of government. We weren't able to, to um, safeguard those institutions and support those institutions and make sure that they function. Because ideally, anybody, however extreme, should be able to win for president, yeah. right? But have to be forced to work within the confines of our democratic system or of our constitution. And that's still my issue with Duterte. It's like, okay, the killings. I've seen a lot of the killings. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, you know, families broken by this, um, a lot of injustice. But what really worries me is the long term of what will our democracy look like five, ten years from now. And that's why this project that I've been working on lately, which, you know, you've been attending and, and yeah. part of and advise, advising me. And, and, you know, that that's kind of what I believe in is that, you know, this issue of we become so reactive to the daily outrage that we're getting on social media and we're so divided and those who support the powers that be you know they are benefiting from our division yeah and because we're kind of caught up being reactive we're no longer being proactive yeah and proactive meaning understanding how our democracy is supposed to work uh, discoursing with people from all different perspectives and walks of life, figuring out how we, regular citizens, can participate and, and work together despite our differences. You know, we don't have to like each other to work together. We just have, we're all kind of facing the same direction. Um, and so in, while we're looking at the daily outrage, we're not looking five years from now, ten years from now. And as a novelist, as, as a writer, you know, I believe that one of the roles of artists, of, of Filipino creatives, who are creative people, is to imagine what our country can look like 5, 10, 20 years from now. Instead of saying, oh, I hope it's like Japan. Oh, I hope it's like Singapore. Singapore yeah. Right? We, we, we reject these the Western or different systems, and yet, you know, we, we try to rip off our, our neighbors. Instead of saying, okay, well, let's take the good and the bad from all the different systems and make it really tailored to the Filipinos, but also, you know, tailor it for something that is achievable um, in the future. So we've talked about this project, we've had several meetings about it, you know, different people were there already to support it, and I'm very excited to share this uh, project with others. But the main thing there that a lot of people would be surprised about is that you want to work with Duterte supporters too. So tell us about how you think that is going to work and why you think it's essential to work with Duterte supporters? Well, you know, I don't see them as Duterte supporters. That's why I don't call them Duterte or anything like that. Yeah. I see them as Filipinos who exercise their democratic right to put their hope in, 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 a, in a candidate, right? And I respect that. Um, because I also have made, I, I, I think many of them are misguided in making excuses for the killings. For, for the attacks on democracy uh, and checks and balances and all of that. Um, since when have we started making excuses for the super powerful and the dynast dynastic rulers, right? People who have been in power for decades. Why are we making excuses for them? Right? We should be actually questioning them. We should actually be... So anyway, the point is, is um, I see them just as Filipinos who cast votes and I'm not going to judge them for that. And I think we have to stop judging each other for that. Hmm. Uh, for, for judging each other for who we hoped for. Yeah. Um, I've made mistakes and I really, I mean, I sincerely believe, I, I hope that I'm proven wrong, but I believe that five years from now, 10 years from now, a lot of these people will regret uh, making excuses, uh, making the excuses that they have. And so, yeah, I wanna talk to everybody. And that's why this event that I held last Saturday, you know, I was just thinking, okay, well, I've been going to, I've been trying to organize just sort of get-togethers with people and so I, I go I, I, I meet up with people who think like me yeah and what happens is that we get together and we talk about we bitch about Duterte we bitch about the government you know it becomes like a like a bitch fest like we a circle there or it's a like a circle, echo exactly, chamber exactly yeah. a total yeah. echo, echo, yeah. echo chamber and then nothing really happens and and really are we going to be the rebel alliance to take down the the, 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 the big empire the fact of the matter is the government needs us and any government needs us. And what my problem with this government is that they don't recruit us enough. They say, support us, pay your taxes, 
you know, do as you're told and shut up. And I'm done with that. I'm done with administrations telling us to do that. Um, so I held an event on Saturday. I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do? I'm just, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to invite anyone whose commitment to community, whatever, whether it's their local community, it, it, it's it's their broader community, whether, you know, they're, they're um, you know, journalists or and supporting that, or, or they're, they're artists, or, or, or they're Activists LGBTQ, and, yeah. you know, act, yeah, uh, support. Basta, I have seen throughout the years that I've known them, their commitment to the community. I don't care who they voted for. Because to me, it's all, all about, we need to build something from the ground up. We need to build a better machine than what the, the politicians have built for us. Because they're always saying, we're going to do the top-down approach, yeah. right? Um, and you know, I, well, my last story that I've been working on, um, in fact, I'm trying to finish writing it, was about the, the, the drug rehab initiatives. And it turns out that from all the people that I've been interviewing, you know, the, the people on the street, the, the, uh, I mean, the, the activists, the, the doctors in, in the government centers, um, the, the, the addicts themselves, um, the think tanks, basically the government came in with this law and order solution to what is a public health poli uh, uh, yes, crisis. definitely. And um, when they came in, they were woefully unprepared, talagang unprepared for what was necessary. So the cops came in, they thought they could fix it. And so it was the church, it was the LGUs, you know, it was the barangays yeah. who stepped up to fill the need, to fill the void. And so I realized, that, and you know, we've heard this all before, it really is a question of grassroots. It's, it's, it's not the grassroots overthrowing the government, it's, it's us filling in to actually show, okay, this is what we're building, and hey, government, do you want to be part of it? And um, so this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get us together, this is what I did on Saturday, invited everybody along. We had something like nearly 50 people, it was incredible. Yeah. All I did was provide the venue, and provide the cold beer, yeah. San Miguel beer, always. And um, everyone introduced each other. My, my, my only ask, if you're going to drink my beer, is no partisan politics. Because we're always bitching about it. We're always saying, oh, the Philippine politics, it's so, it's so divided, it's so, so toxic, obsessed, it's toxic, to it, it's personality politics. Yeah. So, so yeah, let's not talk about that, right? But let's reclaim politics from that sort of discourse, you know? Um, Talking about big solutions, quick fixes, um, all of that, that's, that's, the, that's the rhetoric, that's the language of the rich and powerful, you know, the, 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 the political elite. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that it, it really is the small communities stepping up. And I also believe that, you know, when we rally, when we rage online, we're always talking about, you know, these, this big systemic change. Right? For example, the criminal justice system, right? We talk about um, how broken it is and we keep hoping for another set of tra uh, trapos to come in and fix it for us. And they never do, yeah. right? So instead of doing that, why don't we look at and, and focus on the small achievable goals that we as constituents, we as citizens can actually have some sort of effect, something really tiny, which we, which, which we accomplished, for example, with the RH bill. It was really incremental. Right? It got watered down, but it was still a step forward. So instead of saying, reform the criminal justice system, why don't we just focus on something really tiny that, that they give us that we know will have a big effect, like body cameras, right? If you have body cameras on all the PNP, like PDEA has already, you know, they, they want to do that, but the PNP refuses. If um, you had body cameras, then you'd have accountability, right? Transparency. And same thing, we talk about the anti-dynasty bill. Right? That's a huge thing, and we know the congressmen are never going to do that. So instead of just actually, and, and we should, we should always stand our ground to, for these things, but we should have no illusions that we will have that systemic change, right? Because we're not empowered to do that, but we are empowered to have these small incremental things. So instead of just saying anti dynasty bill or else we're not going to do anything else and yeah. just wait around for it, why don't we identify the young leaders? You know who we can get behind why don't we support them why don't we find out their issues and talk about these things on social media instead of bitching about what moka usun did and 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 what you know rj nieto did i mean yes of course we need to stand our ground against lies and disinformation and propaganda and all of that but at the same time let's reserve and focus a lot of our 
our energies and resources towards these other things that are achievable and actually change the conversation into something positive because there's a lot of positive going on out there there's a lot of people doing things in the communities a lot of people doing things independently and if we kind of started talking about them then we link them up together and we have some sort of well if not cohesion amongst the different citizens all these different links in the chain then at least we'll have discourse okay so you want to move beyond social media you want to meet people where they can work together instead of like be in perpetual opposition to each other how do people who want to join this movement join it because they can't really message you exactly on facebook <laughs> anymore well so, I'm, i've decided we, our relationship with facebook has been one of complete dependence mm. even now for example I, this whole week that i've been off yeah. suspended i can't even message people anymore so a lot of people didn't show up to the meeting because they were saying to Loiba yeah. and I couldn't reply. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going offline. I, I mean, off Facebook. I'm going to not rely on it. I'm, I'm going to put up my own website. I'm going to start uh, broadcasting across all social media yeah. platforms and not just focus on one okay. where I'm a, a symptom of that. And I, I recommend all of us do that so that we're no longer beholden to it. Let's take back social media. And I'm not saying take back and kill the mob and defeat our enemies. Yeah. I'm saying let's let's use Move it beyond social media proactively. Right? Yeah, and yeah. make social media just the part instead of the main thing. Let's use social yeah. media instead yeah. of as a tool it instead of yeah, yeah. Right. But the thing is, you know, the truth is is that I'm I don't have all the answers. I'm this I'm a writer. I'm 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 a, I'm a konyo kid from Makati. I I have all sorts of questions that I've asked in in yeah. a lot of my my, my publications and I'm trying to figure this out I don't know the first thing about organizing yeah. but I realized that if I'm going to wait until I actually do until I and let people Dictate. prevent me yeah, yeah. and hinder me by saying oh you don't know what you're doing about shut up ka na lang. Yeah. you know forget that I'm just gonna get out there I'm gonna try I'm gonna learn from each other because I think that's what we need to start doing is learn from each other um, best practices and, and, and be open to that um, because we've stopped doing that yeah. and you know I I want to work with everybody I want to learn how we can be more engaged because if I don't learn how to do it and help other people help us learn from each other you know what are we gonna do how are we gonna know yeah thank you so much Miguel very inspiring stuff and I think um, one takeaway that the Duterte supporters watching this should should uh, have is you were harassing the wrong guy <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching this episode. If you want to discuss this, do attend the meetup. We will talk about this. Miguel's meetup is coming soon too, so stay tuned for that. And on behalf of our staff and uh, the millions of staff, Pepper Max, see you next week. Bye, Illustrado. You don't and... have to read it. You just have to buy it. <laughs> okay.